All right, can you hear me? Okay, great. Well, good afternoon, uh, Secretary Del Toro, Ms. Betty. It's great to see you here. Uh, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, shipmates, friends, and family. Welcome to your United States Naval War College, and it is truly a fine Navy day. And when I say it's a fine Navy day, and the team's heard me say this, but I, I love saying it, it's not just because we're in Newport. That's also true. Newport is a fantastic place. And it's not just because we're at the United States Naval War College. That's also true. And it's also a fantastic place. But what makes this a truly fine Navy day is we have the chance, the honor, of honoring one of our greatest shipmates. So this is why it's a particularly fine Navy day. So Dr. Hattendorf's remarkable career spans over six decades, during which he has authored or co-authored, edited, or co-edited numerous seminal works that have significantly contributed to our understanding of naval history and maritime strategy. So this is our 140th year as a Naval War College, which is a great time to reflect on our past as well as look into our future. And I was recently, and sorry, spoiler alert, I already told Dr. Hattendorf this, but I was recently looking at one of our old organizational charts from our archives, which showed a little uh, younger uh, Lieutenant Hattendorf oh. here at the Naval War College in 1972. Wow. Um, it's a great photograph. Um, not only has he served our Naval War College for over 50 years, but he literally wrote, wrote the book on the War College. It's entitled Sailors and Scholars, The Centennial History of the United States Naval War College. Um, and I will tell you, it was one of the first things that I was given when I showed up here and said, here, read this. Um, and, and I did. So thank you, John Jackson, I think you're here. That's the one who gave me the book and said, here, read this. And I did. So Professor Hattendorf, it is truly an honor to be with you here today at this unveiling. And now it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce our guest speaker, the United States Naval Academy, Naval Postgraduate School, and most importantly, Naval War College graduate. Um, he has served our Navy and our nation with distinction both at sea and ashore. He's had a distinguished career as a surface warfare officer rising to destroyer command as the commissioning CEO of the Bulkley, a White House fellow with the Office of Management and Budget, and in the private sector as the co-founder, president, and chief executive officer of SBG Technology Solutions. These experiences make him uniquely qualified to lead our Navy and Marine Corps team in this dynamic time in our nation's history. So distinguished guests, faculty, staff, students, please join me in giving a warm Naval War College welcome to our 78th Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. This isn't something I needed when I was a student here, Professor, but uh, I need to break it out now. Good afternoon, everyone. Admiral Garvin, thanks for the introduction, for keeping it short. And thank you for your leadership and stewardship of the Navy War College over the past 14 months. You certainly answered the call to duty that we assigned to you 14 months ago. We're very proud that uh, you will depart here now and go on to that other, uh, how should I say this without prejudicing anyone, <laughs> that other institution of higher academic learning. Um, and, and, and the fact that you will soon be out of uniform uh, gives, gives me tremendous pride as well, too, and to you, Cheryl, as well, for all the hard work that you've done here in these past 14 months. Thank you. And of course, we look forward to your change of command tomorrow, Admiral Walker, as you prepare to transition to Washington, D.C. to serve as the next president of the National Defense University. I will tell you that in your interview, and you all can imagine how seriously I take assignment of a new president to the Navy War College, uh, it took tremendous discipline to, for me to actually allow you to come here, given that you were an Air Force enlisted person when you first came in. <laughs> but despite that, uh, you certainly have shown tremendous accomplishment, both you and your wife, uh, throughout your Naval career, and we couldn't have a better person here at the Navy War College moving forward beginning tomorrow as well. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you this afternoon to honor Dr. Haddendorf, a legend here at the War College and a titan in the study of maritime history. And I would like to extend a special warm welcome to your daughters, Christina, Ingrid, and Anna, grandchildren and close friends who are here with us today. And I know that one person, Mrs. Haddendorf, is also looking down on us today. For 60 years, Professor Hendorf has served our Navy and our nation as a surface warfare officer during the Vietnam War. He sailed throughout the Indo-Pacific, experiencing both the joys and the hardships of life at sea. During his shore duty tours on the Navy staff and the Naval History Division, and as well as the speechwriter and research assistant to the president of the War College, he gained a deep appreciation for those who served before him, examining the challenges that they faced and the decisions that they made. And after earning his doctorate in history from the University of Oxford, Professor Haddendorf returned to the Naval War College to serve as a civilian faculty member, teaching courses ranging from strategy and policy to maritime history to generations of Naval leaders from around the globe, like the ones that I just addressed a few moments ago in our strategy forum, reminding them that the lessons that they learn in these hallowed halls will serve them well as they continue to advance throughout all their military and civilian careers in defense of our national security and our economic interests. With dozens of publications to his name, one not need to look far to find Professor Adendorf's works and witness the influences he had on debates surrounding the global maritime challenges that we face today. And how wonderful to have someone so storied and astute in history with personal experience recognizing the challenges of what it's like to actually serve as an active duty officer in our Navy and what it's like for our enlisted men and women to serve throughout all corners of the globe. He studied British and American naval strategies brilliantly and eloquently, capturing their respective evolutions over hundreds of years. He brought to life the stories of our world's greatest naval thinkers and leaders, including Sir Julian Corbett, Admiral Lord Nelson, Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce, and Alfred Thayer Mahan. Now, there are rumors that he knew some of these <laughs> other legends personally but I don't think it's true. <laughs> but more recently, he chronicled, as the Admiral said, the history of Newport, Rhode Island and the growth of the Naval War College, reinforcing that Newport is indeed a Navy town. And I can't tell you, as Secretary of the Navy, the only Secretary of the Navy to have attended this fine institution, simply by chance, because there's been few Secretaries of the Navy who've done a full career in the Navy, which would have afforded them the opportunity to come here. But I can't tell you how proud I am and how important it is, how important this institution is to Newport and the nation. And every time I cross that bridge and I look to my port side, um, I think about the work that's been done here. And I think about you, John, as well, and the millions, the thousands, hundreds of thousands of students that you've impacted throughout the years. More recently, um, and while this portrait is an important recognition of his contributions to an impact on the Newport and Naval War College communities. His true legacy is indeed the generations of Naval War College graduates around the world who studied under him, including myself. As a former student of Professor Haddendorf during my time at the War College almost three decades ago, I can say that he had a profound impact on both my career and my life. In 1996, he taught then Lieutenant Commander Carlos del Toro to appreciate our country's history as a maritime nation, to think strategically as a leader, and to learn from the decisions of those who went before me. And with no less appreciation for technology, and in the forum that I just came from, that was very 
very good question that was asked to me by a State Department person about, you know, technology and how important it is to war fighting. And I said, yes, it is. It's very important to war fighting, very important to understand and embrace and all those things, but it's really strategic thinkers that we need in our Navy, well-versed in history and the lessons of the past, so that we can prevent making mistakes well into the future and be far more effective in deterring us from going to conflict and when called to conflict to win. As then the director of the Advanced Research Department and the Ernest J. King Professor of Maritime History, he served as one of my three thesis advisors along with Dr. Robert Wood and Dr. Stephen Foth. I was sitting at my desk at the Pentagon in the Office of Secretary of the Navy yesterday and my speechwriter came in with a copy of my thesis. <laughs> I think it's been 20 years or so since I read it. Um, but as I wrote my thesis titled The Congressional Budget Committees and Their Impact on the Department of Defense, which I will highlight has been described by my staff as a, quote, page turner, unquote. <laughs> Professor Haddendorf was instrumental in guiding my examination of the evolution of our nation's federal budget process, showing me how to use history as a foundation for well-crafted arguments and thoughtful recommendations. And I remember having many, many conversations with him about original thought, not just copying the ideas of others, not copying, but borrowing the ideas of others, try to come up with some original thought of your own. As I read through this thesis yesterday, I panicked because there's so much original thought in here that I'm a little worried that current members of Congress may be quite upset with me when they read it. But nevertheless, there are not enough ways to thank you, Professor. And when I delivered my speech last fall at Harvard University, calling for a new approach to our national maritime statecraft, the lessons that I learned from Professor Hadendorf were also not far from my own mind. During my speech, I stated that, and I quote, it is my steadfast belief that we will only be successful in developing a new national approach to maritime statecraft with the support of military and civilian leaders who are well-versed in our nation's maritime history. For the challenges that we face today are eerily similar to the ones that we have faced in the past, unquote. For 50 years, Professor Haddendorf has worked to educate civilian and military leaders across the globe on matters relating to maritime history, shaping our approaches to tackling the challenges of today, and demonstrating through his works that victory is indeed achieved through sea power. Professor Haddendorf, sir, your passion for history and love of education has transformed so many lives, more than you can ever imagine. Our Navy, our nation, and indeed our world are better off because of your service to others, and we are proud to be part of your enduring legacy. May this portrait forever serve as a reminder to future generations of Naval War College students of your dedication to this college, your relentless pursuit of knowledge, and the thousands of lives that you have influenced. May God bless the Haddendorf family, and may God continue to grant our nation with fair winds and following seas. Thank you for the privilege of speaking today.
Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary, Admiral. Appreciate your kind remarks. Um, I just want to say, I hope very briefly, um, thank you a, a number of times. First of all, thank you, United States Navy, for being such a wonderful organization in which to spend one's life and profession. It's uh, been a great privilege and honor uh, to be part of the Navy team. And thank you, Naval War College, uh, for being my professional home for more than half a century. Um, I came here in a rather indirect way. Uh, as it happened, the, uh, my, uh, in 19, I joined the Navy actually 60 years ago last Thursday. And <laughs> the, uh, it, it, was the day, it was the day before the Tonkin Gulf incident and a week before the Tonkin Gulf resolution that sent us all to war. But uh, uh, that was the baptism of fire that followed the excitement of joining the Navy. But the, when I went, went, finished my officer candidate training here in Newport on the 5th of February, 1965, the, our, my, the commissioning officer and the speaker at my graduation was the president of the Naval War College, Admiral Charles Melson. And uh, we, you know, it was that strange, mysterious building up on the hill. We didn't know too much about it. But what he was talking about in his speech, he's, I still have a copy of his speech, which was sent to all of us, which was really inspiring. And uh, I've, I've kept it all these, all these years. Um, but then I didn't think much about it until I went, um, uh, went to sea and then came back. And then um, I was at, at um, Brown University as a graduate student, and some of you may have seen the display out in front where I was looking for um, uh, some books in naval history, and Brown University had virtually none. Uh, so I asked uh, the uh, people there if I could use the Naval War College, and I'd actually known some of the people here. The, the then Ernest J. King Professor of Maritime History uh, was a well-known, or not yet well-known, uh, author named Stephen Ambrose. And um, I was given permission through his help uh, to audit uh, the naval history lectures that were giving, being given to the student in those days in this very auditorium, uh, and his successor, uh, Thaddeus Tuleya. And uh, so that was the, my, my first connection. And while I was there, I was at Brown, I'd come up with the idea of studying the American Revolution. Um, but Brown wasn't very much interested in that, and particularly the Navy and the American Revolution, they had no interest in that. Uh, but I did find a, um, an, another professor who was interested, um, um, a great professor named Hunter Dupree, uh, who's professor of history and science and technology. And he suggested to me, he said, well, you know, what you need to do for your thesis is to use your experience. Uh, you've, been, you've been in the Navy, and he had been in the Navy, uh, as well during the Second World War. He'd been a student of Samuel Elliott Morrison's at Harvard and uh, had actually been his teaching ass uh, uh, assistant. And uh, he said, why don't you uh, take a thesis and study the Naval War College and look at strategic thinking and technology and see how those things are put together in terms of war gaming. And so that was my thesis, uh, studying the, the, the small period of it, between 1898 in 1917, and uh, uh, that was uh, that article was published in the Naval War College Review. And so, after I finished Brown, I was went back uh, to sea duty. I went to destroyer school and was uh, made operations officer and destroyer. And uh, one day, I was really shocked to have suddenly have the commodore of our squadron walk in to my stateroom and it w late one afternoon, and he said. Uh, President of the Naval War College wants to see you tomorrow, 0800, be there. And I said, yes, sir, you know, so and I was there, and I said, didn't know who he was, uh, and I said to the Commodore, I said, what's the name of the man? And he said, uh, this is uh, Vice, Vice Admiral Stansfield Turner, and you'll find out. <laughs> so, so I appeared in the front office here, uh, and all the new buildings were not yet built, here, and it was in what's now the NCC uh, director's office, and maybe again the president's office. Um, um, and we, I was hired on the spot to be the research assistant and, and um, speechwriter, and one of the early instructors in strategy and policy, as the secretary 
mentioned. Uh, and I've always wondered how it was that he found my name, as I didn't know him or I didn't know really anybody at the War College uh, at that particular point. But um, I think he, maybe he had seen my published work on, I didn't, written on Sir Julian Corbett in, as a graduate student and on, on my, doc, my thesis, so I came here. But within a year, he understood what I, was, what I needed and uh, opened the doors to get me to Oxford University. Uh, and uh, he had been a Rhodes Scholar and had connections there and so put, put me through. So that was very much part of it, and uh, it was just really underscores how, how the Navy and the Naval War College really created me <laughs> and created my career to, to do what I did uh, over my lifetime. So I uh, offer that all to the, to the Naval War College. Uh, and, the inspiration of, the, of this place, which was really, which is really founded to do the kinds of work that, that I've uh, tried to do over the years in history, and it's been a, a really wonderful place to to do history alongside people who are thinking about the present and the future, and uh, you get really insights, new insights into history as you as you do that. So thank you, Naval War College, and thank you. Um, Jerry York here was on the stage with us. Thank you for giving me a smiling face. Uh, not all the portraits are, are smiling, even here at the War College. Um, I should mention that the college has, had a, has a long tradition of collecting portraits. Uh, we start, got our first portrait in 1900 uh, with Admiral St Stephen B. Luce's portrait, and it was all just presidents of the college up until 1970. And in 1970, the, um, um, the president of the college, then Vice Admiral uh, Richard Colbert, created a faculty portrait collection. And the first portraits in that were the portrait of uh, Rear Admiral Henry Eccles, which now hangs in the library, and the portrait of uh, Rear Admiral Richard Bates, which hangs in there. There's now a little faculty uh, group at the end, at the top of the staircase on the second deck at, in Hewitt Hall. Um, so we, that's when we started. It's only 50 years now. We haven't had too many uh, takers for the faculty portraits. The last was uh, 2009 when uh, uh, Porter Halliburton's uh, portrait was added to the collection uh, after spending uh, about 25 years here on the faculty. So it's a great privilege and honor to be part of that uh, faculty and to join. Jerry was, has done other, two other portraits uh, for the college. He did uh, a real Admiral Wisecup's portrait and we were John Christensen's uh, portrait. So it's, uh, we're adding to the Gerald York collection <laughs> here. So thank you very much. And um, thank you to everyone here who has um, helped put on this, th uh, this event. I appreciate it very much. From archives to uh, the museum, who bought a special easel for this event uh, so we can Un unveil portraits, and Admiral Garvin, you'll have a very nice easel when your portrait is unveiled. So, <laughs> so thank you very much. Thanks to all. Thank you all for being here today. I greatly appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's ceremony. We'd like to invite you up, please, to view the portrait and congratulate Professor Hattendorf. Thank you. <laughs>